Hello everybody, in this tutorial I would like to teach you something about FIR filters and uh, signal sampling and how to get a clean signal from this to this. In the first um, audio file we could hear there's a lot of noise in the background, in the second file we could hear that there wasn't such such uh, much noise and in this tutorial I would like to take you step by step how to design your FIR filter and how to quantize signal etc etc in Octave and in MATLAB so uh, first of all what we need to do when we're working with Octave we need to write these lines of codes that mean that we are clearing all previous windows, figures and other things that might be in the memory or on the screen just to be safe and quick so we could proceed to the next uh, steps. So one thing you got to know that if you want to have a f audio file you need to have it with a WAV uh, extension saved. These two methods visible here are uh, my own methods and I, everything will be available in the description below, all the code, all the files. So, But now you don't have to worry about these two methods, these are just written to load audio file and save audio file to, to files. First of all we need to load an audio file into our project, let's begin by typing S as signal and FP as a frequency of an audio file that we have right here. We can see in Audacity and or in other programs that our build that WAV file has a 44.1 kilohertz uh, frequency sampling which means that this FP will be equal to 44.1 kilohertz later in this project. So now we are instantiating this uh, method that I was talking earlier and we are loading our bird.awave file to our project and let me <coughs> give you some comments. This is loading of a audio file to project. It could be any file. I just chose this uh, bird tweeting because it was really simple to filter later because the tweets were on one frequency and the noise was all the other frequencies. You will so you will see it later. Where S is signal and FP is frequency of a of a file which is for us this moment hertz. We are now have a loaded <coughs> sorry file into our project and uh, now we would like to know how long it is for us to later to um, to use while creating uh, for example figures this is a build function inside octave that we give as a parameter our audio file which was loaded here so this file our file has around 1.78 seconds is 1.78 seconds long so that means uh, that if you multiply it by 44.1 kilohertz it will give us around 78.5 uh, samples so that's the number you, we could expect uh, that uh, vector uh, t length vector would have next step that we need to take is to create 
a vector of samples that are equally equally separated from themselves that is uh, representative of the length of our audio signal so the vector t will equal la lane space this is also a built-in function uh, starting from zero with a resolution of t length divided by fp which is frequency this is 44.1 kilohertz ending on length of our signal now the next thing that we can do but we don't uh, have to is um, amplify our signal just to make it more standing out from the for for us to listen and to analyze but it's not necessary this value amp equals 10 could be as good as uh, it could be 5 it could be 4 it could be whatever works for you and now we will multiply our figure by this amplification factor equal 10 so our signal that starts from the first sample ending on the last sample yeah uh, which is t length is equal to amplification factor multiplied by our signal again the same from one to the final length now we come to the part where i have to explain a little bit as good as i understand it we will create a for loop that will present us with a enough good resolution for our sampling of a signal. And for that, I called uh, this uh, parameter bits, bits of a filter. And for this signal, five was enough. I will get to that later. And what that does is showing us how much noise compared to the original signal our filter is generating for the moment it's a for loop because we don't know at the beginning how many quote unquote bits our filter needs and how much of a resolution we have to have so i know it's five but for you it might differ and uh, just remember uh, they are not accurately described as bits it's just the naming convention convention that i have so now we are starting to generate our for loop starting from one ending on our bits value oh, i've created a parameter that is a 2 to the power of n and this n is, uh, as we can see here, the number of bits that we are trying to determine how much is enough. So now we are coming to the part where we are actually quantizing and sampling our signal. And for that, uh, we're gonna use this parameter a. And we are using round function just to provide uh, that our figure will be as smooth as possible. We are uh, multiplying it by A and dividing it also by A. It's like rounding a number in other um, programming languages something like this so now we would like to also know how much noise our quantization generates and for that we will create a noise variable noise uh, variable variable which length is equal to the length of our signal and noise is simply uh, the original signal, 
subtracted with a signal that was quantized. Now it would be also a good time to plot our uh, figures and our signals on a on a plot. So let's let's do that. So first there will be three plots and they all will be overlapping each other. First will be our original signal. which will be blue, let's say blue. It will be blue line, line and blue. And let's call it original signal. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay, the second signal will be our quantized signal. And let's say it will have a green line and we will call it quantized signal. And our final signal that will be plot on this figure is noise, obviously. And let's say it would be red line. And noise actually is a er error of sampling. So I will comment uh, the file and see you in a while. The next thing I would like to show you is how to deduce if number of bits of our filter is enough or it is not enough. And for that we can make a signal deviation which will be a signal strength uh, divided by signals noise and it will tell us how much noise to ratio we have using our quantization method and if it's uh, enough or if it isn't enough i will create a new variable called sig signal deviation deviation and this n and the colon means that all n rows will be read in its entirety. We're using a factor of 20 because we are making a logarithmic uh, scale dependent on voltage. So that's why we are using 20. STD is a standard deviation method in Octave and we are taking a standard deviation from a signal original signal which is a which has a length of t t length and we are dividing it by a deviation of noise of our sampling error now we can print our plot to see how much noise we have or how little noise we have and for that I will use a built-in function print and our plot will have a name for example quantized signal space and now I will use a function that uh, converts int integers to strings 
and we'll take our n from the for loop just to make a unique number in the name of our plot and save it as png dot png okay now now we will have to specify which printer we are going to use for octave i am using the png and just for safety we are saying that we want it in color so each time the for loop will increment we will have a new print of our signal that will be called quantized signal for example 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 etc etc now we will create a audio uh, audio file signal for, for from our signal called signal rounded and we are using round function and we are taking our signal multiplying it by a factor of a and dividing it by a now come handy our audio save function that we are having in the folder here on the left and we would like to save our file as a for example bird integer to string of m at wave and we are using frequency of the original file and this is the end of our loop so we can check if it's working or not There's an error, okay. Okay. Maybe we don't we can't use double quotes. Let's try it now. Okay. Here we have we have to have semicolon and behind it as well and end it with single quote semicolon single quote the same here semicolon single quote and the same here semi colon without comma and single quote was also a set. One thing uh, I forgot to do previously was to name our uh, axis and uh, labels. So we can, or we don't, but we don't have to have a grid on our plot. It's nicer to look at. Grid on x label will be called mm -hmm. time in seconds y label will be called amplitude title of our pictures and now I'm going to use uh, 
a little trick that I will explain you in a moment. But first, we have to have a title. So let's call it Singular Step of Quantization Number Colon. And now the trick is that if we want to have a this n uh, n which is number of for loop that we are in so if you want to describe our plot with a n number which is this number uh, a for loop iteration we cannot do it i cannot do it in a single line we need to have a double multi-line title of our plot and how you do it in Octave and MATLAB I found out that if you have a curly braces and inside a normal braces and you divide two lines with a comma then you can have multiple lines of title that you're gonna use in to stream and let's uh, let's see how it works so yeah this is a first step of our quantization we can see singular step of quantization number one that's what I told about earlier it's multi-line title so we can see that this red noise is quite big compared to original signal and also quite big compared to our uh, quantized signal but if we have our resolution increased step by step using this for loop we can see that noise is getting smaller 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 and smaller to the point where it's small enough for us to handle so let's say five uh, steps is enough and we can move on so now we are going to create a signal a plot of signal uh, in time multiplied by amplitude and that was selected uh, early in the project and what figure means it means in octave that we are creating a new window that will hold our plot and now we're going to use a subplot method so we can have multiple plots on one picture three rows uh, our plot will have our window will have three rows of plots three columns of plots and this plot we are working here right now will be first of them and this will be plot of time and signal our original signal and it will be blue it will have a title one thing uh, as you could see right here it doesn't matter if you're using double quotes or single quotes unless uh, as they are consistent within the title label uh, it doesn't matter X label will be time in seconds and Y label will be amplitude hold on means that the program will not close the plot after it is created and I would also like to have grid on our plot after that we'll create a signal to noise ratio plot that will tell us how much noise there is compared to signal and how good our quantization resolution is so let's do that and it will be a third plot because the second one on the first row will be just an empty space uh, 
a little bit third. And we here are actually plotting our deviation of our signal in color red and we will be using dots as a representation so this uh, asterisk mean, means dots hold on and we will also plot on the same uh, figure also signal deviation but using a blue line that will connect these plots these points together Title will be SNR, signal to noise ratio. And it will be depending on number of bits of iterations and in uh, actually resolution that we have. Um, accepted uh, during creation of our for loop, for loop. Let's let's have it that way. And Y label will be our signal to noise ratio. And the Y label will be signal to noise ratio presented in the logarithmic scale. And it will be presented in decibels. Now I'm creating a variable that represents how many roots of an equation we will, uh, we will want to have so we want to have a root from one to the number of bits with the difference of one between them polyfit is a built-in function that takes as a parameter uh, our number of roots vector of roots actually and um, our vector, if we imagine it, is vector looking like this. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But this uh, function polyfit would like to have vector looking like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
So this uh, symbol does it for us. It reverts vector from being horizontal to vertical. And we are taking our signal deviation and using one as a parameter that says, yes, I would like to use this vector uh, for our best uh, for our best fit to this polyfit function the description of the description of polyfit would be uh, could be found in help in this command window so i recommend that so after we've done all that we would like to save our audio file and be able to work on it but I found out that if I want to, I want this script to work properly, I need to copy and paste a file that is last one. So in our case, bird five, and uh, create in our case again, bird six file just to be just for script to be able to run properly. I don't know why it's happening, but it is. So we'll copy code right here and explain you. So we are creating file one code bird that is number bits. So after all this for loop is, uh, ends, the bits will be five. So it will be bird five as we can see here. And we are overwriting it to be code bird six bits plus one and we copy one file to another copy file is also a built-in function so you don't need to worry about that after we created all this we have a we will have a file called bird6 and on that file we would like to proceed with a Fourier transform format analysis and uh, denoise our signal eventually. So let's do that right now. And I will call my new variable signal underscore final. And again, frequency sampling will be the same as previously. Audio load file two. As we know, the Fourier transformat is symmetrical in its method. That's why the only first half of a plot of a Fourier transformat plot will be useful for us to analysis because the second one is just a mirror image of the first. So a new variable called n, you can call it whatever you want, will be f frequency divided by 2. So we just uh, use that first half of a Fourier transformat. So again, we are loading a file, file two, to be called uh, sig variable signal final with a frequency of FP that is 44.1 kilohertz. And as we know, a Fourier transformat has a characteristic that says that only first half of frequencies is useful for analysis the second half is just a mirror image so we don't need that one that's why i'm creating a variable called n that is equal to fp divided by 2 which is around 22000 hertz next thing i would like you to do is uh, make a function that will determine to which power of 2 i can have my Fourier transformat because as we know or maybe not the best way to approach Fourier transformat is to use a power of two because it's a uh, faster that way so I will copy ready method that I have and this method determines to which power I need to raise my number two to be bigger than 22 around around 22 
kilohertz. Why is that? Because our FP equals 44100 hertz, as we know. But only first half is useful, which is 22050. And what number to the power of 2 is greater than this 22050? We don't know that, but this method here is just for that. I know I could use I could use logarithm, but I had already made that one previously, so I'm using it anyway. So our number that is sufficient enough is will be called nf and it will be 2 to the power of oops 2 to the power on n help which is nf help which is defined right here it's a this number that we need to take for our Fourier transform to be most efficient. The next step is to create another variable called let's say nf2 and it is nf, nf divided by 2 plus 1 which is the range of our frequencies that we are going to analyze from 0 to the half. Now we will create a vector called f Line, line space function it creates vectors starting from zero with the resolution of F, fp2 to the nf second so this is to the first ending on the first half of our fp now we can create a plot of uh, what we have uh, accomplished so the next subplot will be fourth one three three and four it will be second row first column because three 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 by three is our grid of uh, plots that we are using and it will be plot of time and sig our final signal which is this bird six that will appear this bird six that will appear later in our uh, tutorial starting from time one ending on t length because the signal bird from one to five have the same length as our original So let me explain what I did here. This support number four is support of only a signal after iterative sampling. So in our case, it will be after fifth sampling. And it is plot of time and this uh, audio file, which the plot will have title signal quantized and on the second line without noise. Uh, X label is time in seconds and amplitude is uh, on the Y label. Well, so this is the time when we we'll make a Fourier transform uh, take place. Discrete Fourier transform. It will create a signal fast Fourier transform which will be a function f FFT of our final signal and we are using all frequency range so from 0 to 44 uh, thousand Hertz which NF is 44.1 kilohertz we are using all range because Fourier transform math needs it. It needs to be at least two times 
larger than a frequency that we are that we are caring about. The next thing that we are going to do is take an absolute value of this uh, Fourier transform at signal that we just created. which uses absolute method from Octave. And we're going to plot it on a frame. So what we did here was make an uh, take make an absolute value of our uh, Fourier fast Fourier transformate signal, which was this bird six in our script. With bird six is equal to bird five, and plot it. So we plot in our frequency domain, which is from zero to NF2, which NF2 is around is around 22,000 Hertz uh, as I said earlier from it's only the first half of our FP which is from 0 to 44.1 thousand Hertz and uh, it is a module of a signal after iterative sampling in frequency domain. That's all it is. Uh, now I would like to warn you because I would like uh, I want to copy and paste from my previous project some snippets of code, and I will be doing it and explaining you what I did. I think it would be the best way, the fastest. Okay, let's let's come back. The thing I did here is I take an angle of our signal after Fourier transformer FFT and uh, create from it a new variable and subplot it in the frequency domain from one to our half of frequency that is needed. And it is a phase of a signal after iterative sampling in frequency domain and while label is phase angle of a signal declared in radians. So now the thing I did is make a plot of a noise signal which it is just a noise uh, in time domain uh, dependent uh, x label is time and y label is amplitude so it is exactly the same what we did earlier but now on the another plot so let's move on the next thing we would like to know is uh, create and fast Fourier transformat for the noise signal why you may ask because uh, you need to understand one thing we did this Fourier transformat to see in which frequencies our bird is tweeting so we can know in which which frequencies we need to cut out to be able to hear only the bird and not the noise so now we did that for our sample signal and we can this uh, subtract a noise from that signal so now we we have to make a Fourier transform at only for the signal to see in which frequencies it lies so we doing just that we're taking a noise we're creating noise for FFT by uh, transforming noise in the frequency domain full, full domain and then we are creating an absolute value of this noise FFT by using built-in function absolute value and after that you, you can predict what happens yes we are going to plot that on our picture
and what we did here is a create a subplot of model of signal spectrum i hope that makes sense in english because uh, as you can hear it's not my first tongue so what we did is take a half to plot we take a half of our original frequency which is 44.1 kilohertz so half of it is around 22 kilohertz and plot a no a noise signal that was passed through FFT and then absolute value of it to our plot. And we the title will could, could be module of noise spectrum. X label represents frequency and Y label is module of noise spectrum. The next thing we will have to do is uh, as previously take an angle of FFT noise signal. And what I did here is, as I said previously, take a phase angle of a noise signal, which is noise, FFT, and the angle, this is new variable, and we're creating it by applying angle method to noise signal after it went through FFT. And this is our final subplot, subplot 9. And it is, again, in domain of frequency from zero to half of original frequency. And this is our noise angle variable uh, from one to the half. And the title could be, for example, phase angle of noise, X label frequency, Y label phase angle of signal represented by region, in regions. Okay, what I did in these two lines is save a picture of uh, our of our work so far, and is and it is a plot of signal of signals, oh, which is original sampled signal and noise signal. It is saved as a PNG, and the size of this picture will be one sixty by nine hundred pixels. So that, that's it for, for now, and we can check if it works. Mm -hmm. 95. Mm -hmm. So it was grid, not geared, obviously. There was a spelling mistake in here, T length, I'm sorry about that, or with probably comma involved. But let's see. Maybe, 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 who knows? Let's see. Yes. So this is a, a picture of all the plots that we did here. So let me go through them again. The first here is a original unchanged signal that is this tweeting of a bird with a noise and all of that. Then this on the right, on the top, is a signal to noise ratio, which is dependent of our resolution that we decided to have using our for loop. So for example, next time you don't have to make this for loop go five times. You could just say, okay, use uh, this five as a parameter and screw all the lower things because it only, it, it only takes time. But if you want to see how much it is improving step by step, that's the way you do it. The next uh, graph is a signal quantized without noise. We can see 
here it is a little bit jagged compared to original signal because that's what quantization do it is taking only some values of samples that are not uh, perfectly matched to the original this is um, a absolute value of a Fourier transformat of this signal original signal oh, sorry uh, after of this sampled final signal this here in the middle is a just as I said for it is this signal after Fourier transformat and after uh, making absolute value of it and we can see that our bird is tweeting in the range of around 2000 to the end of around 3000 hertz I believe the rest of it is just noise so we want to design a fear uh, filter that is a band pass that will only allow from here to here this is a phase of that signal which, which is not much interesting for us right now this is the noise of a signal you might ask wow it is so big here but here it's so small but look at the y-axis it is one for the original signal and here maximum is 200 of that so it is quite small in comparison which is good which is what we expected and we can see uh, the spectrum of noise lies everywhere from the uh, from the zero to the most uh, most high tone that we can have so it means that we need to use a band pass not a low pass not a high pass filter but band pass and this is again the face of our noise signal which is not that much interesting right now next thing is designing a fear filter which we'll uh, do right now one more thing if you have your own audio file or whatever the frequency that you want to isolate will be different you need to think and you need to see what this frequency is and step by step uh, using probing, probing and erroring methods uh, you need to determine which frequencies works for you the best so I know that for me it will be around 2000 to 3000 Hertz but for you it will be different so now again I will be cutting and pasting a code that I already have because I don't want it to be two hour long tutorial and uh, the, in that way it will be simply simpler for me and you to understand what I'm doing we know that I already discussed with you why cut frequency is between 2000 and 200 and between 290 because in my example the bird is tweeting in that range this is called what which is called normalized frequency which let's say it is a variable called wc the normalized frequency is our cut fr cutting frequency divided by half of our fp where fp is circa 44.1 kilohertz fear fear filter coefficients well it's another topping maybe for another time but one thing you have to know the more the better but we should use a power of two but I found out that a odd number is better working for our purposes so I took 512 and subtracted one which is 511 and that's what I used they we're using that many coefficients we're using normalized frequency and type of our filter will be bandpass so it will cut all the lower and all the higher frequencies just as we wanted now it's time to do some plots so let's do that it here was create a figure which is actually a new picture and I know 
that there will be two rows and three columns of subplots and the one we are creating right now will be fourth which is first column second row I think and stem means that will be filler type plot so it will be fillers not straight line and we are creating a this filler type plot using fear coefficients and the title of it will be fear coefficients next thing we have to do is create an audio file signal which is called signal filtered that we pass through our filter that we created uh, sorry pass through filter which is also built in octave function using our fear coefficients Me one means that this is a filter using delay which is all fear filters all fear filters have has delay have delay and that we are using our s final uh, variable which is this bird 6 audio file this s final equals to bird 6 we can understand it that way now we would like to subplot what we already did so let's do that okay what we did here is create another subplot on this subplot there will be two plots one is a signal filtered one is signal final which is bird 6 uh, unfiltered this is only the most uh, this is only audio file that was sampled with most uh, resolution but it wasn't filtered and it will be blue and the filters will be red title as you can see it is time and signal so that's that in this lines what I did what we did is create a absolute value which is this function of a for trust format of a filtered signal which is we took bird 6 make a Fourier transformat of it take an absolute value of it and plot it just to see in which frequencies with with which frequencies we are dealing with and to see to see if our filter works properly or not the next thing we will do is as before take an angle of that uh, signal filtered signal and save our filtered file to its uh, final form i think and that will be basically it so now what we did was uh, as i said before take an angle of this for fourier transformat filtered signal and plot it uh, x label is a frequency and y label is our signal which is on the third place and it is in domain of frequency it is our signal here our variable from 0 to 22,000 uh, Hertz as as it was before now now comes the time for um, saving our filtered uh, file for example naming it bird filtered that wave and using this filtered Mm, filter filtered audio signal that we have and using uh, also a full frequency which is 44.1 kilohertz saving this file should uh, require this uh, re this frequency the original frequency now I will paste a bigger chunk of code but I will explain it line by line so stay with me, please. Now, what we did was create a, a vector, I believe it is vector here in the brackets, the square brackets, a vector of frequency, frequency response of fear filter, which takes as a parameter our fear coefficients, one as a, yes, it is 
transfer coefficient with delay, taking our uh, number of power of two that is necessary to be useful and our original unaltered uh, frequency of an audio and we subplot it. Uh, we subplot it in the domain of frequency and we take absolute value of this h which is described over here what does what this is frequency response x label frequency y label frequency response blah 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 our frequency response phase angle phase angle is as before is an angle of h that is uh, calculated here and again it is frequency response of of phase a angle uh, x label is frequency y label phase angle and we save it save uh, plots as a picture and we save it as a picture of name plots of filter fear in with size 160 by 90 and I promise you it's the end the end end section of this tutorial is create the last and final frame with uh, how to call it uh, f last and final frame with plots that are describing how our fear filter is behaving but it is done automatically so this is this is it for for this part we create a new figure and this here creates a new plot that says how our filter behaves uh, on different for different frequencies how good it uh, will we'll see I, I'll, I'll show you so let's run it Oh yes, I forgot one thing. I forgot to define as filter. As filtered FFT is obviously the Fourier transformat of our as filtered uh, signal using whole range of frequencies, and now it should work. Is it okay? I think so. So let's see what we have. Starting from the beginning. It is plot of what we already know. Noise, quantized signal and original signal. Five times. Yes. Okay. This is the first figure that we saw and, and talked about uh, the, in the middle. This is a second a picture the second uh, figure where we have six plots one is is, uh, is uh, two signals one is original one is after filtration the second plot shows us that yes our filter actually did something and we can hear only frequencies that we want to hear which is between 220 and 290 kilohertz 2200 and 2900 hertz and the rest is uh, basically zero which is good phase angle finally says something that okay between these frequencies there's something going on which is good this is fear coefficients, uh, p pillar like pillar type uh, plot. This is frequency response of our of our signal, and the uh, phase angle 
of this frequency response, which is all look okay to me. And the last thing that I was talking about is this self-generating plot that says how our fear filter uh, behaves depending on frequency and how good it dumps dumps down uh, the, the the voice the, the audio levels and we can see that we have this curve like over here perfectly it would be like a rectangle but we cannot never have it and increasing a number of field coefficients will help us achieve this rectangle like shape which is better obviously and this is magnitude of a signal that is being suppressed we can see that between 2200 and 2900 we have no uh, suppression which is what we want and then suppression goes up to even minus 1, 150 even uh, decibels and this is phase angle of this third filter and that's basically it to prove that we did everything right this is an original signal again we could hear a lot of noise in the background this is uh, after uh, our first quantization, after our first sampling with the lowest resolution, and it sounds horrible. Ouch. This is with greater resolution. This is this for loop at the beginning. It's a little better. It's getting better and better. Well, it's still not perfect, but let me explain you myself why I'm not using, for example, 10. Of course I can, because as I was talking previously, this signal to no noise ratio, for me, it's around 26, 27 decibels. It would be good if your SNR was between like 60 to 100. If you have 80 uh, decibels of uh, noise to signal separation, it's very good. But my task was to use like four or three bits of filter. I used five. Uh, so you can take this for loop to, for example, 10, 11, 12, and it will be perfectly fine. So for audio files, I heard that um, SNR should be around 80 decibels, then it's good. 60, hmm, maybe. I have 26, which is okay, fine, whatever. But you should do something better. And finally, our filtered, our um, most, our, our signal that was sampled with the, with the highest resolution and then was filtered, so let's hear. You could hear echo, echoing noises. I don't know why it happened right now. When I was playing it, it was okay. But I found out that it has something to do with number of fair, uh, coefficients, number of filter uh, number of it, and uh, of frequency cut, like range itself. So you need to Tinker, tinker with it a little bit and it will be should be fine so let's again hear an altered version and filtered version there's no noise in the background that's for sure so that is my method of creating fear filters samplings and etc etc oh, I hope it will be useful for you, for your assignment or whatever. So have a nice day. See you later.